All right, guys, trying to complete things that I've been working on for years. One of those things being all the transformer diagrams for the uh, projects and shop class. So I'm going to do every different kind of configuration that you can see. Um, the playlist will be in the comment section below. You'll find that the PDF is available here. Um, I'll try to update it with this new version. Um, but uh, you'll find that as you go through, if I haven't updated it, that on the older version, X1 was over here, X4 was over here. But in looking at other diagrams in the proper notation, it looks like um, with distribution transformers, they're additive. So I've put the X1 over here. So usually H1 and X1 have the same instantaneous polarity. Uh, if you know better than I do, and this is the incorrect way to do it, then please let me know. So starting off with uh, the first projects that we're going to do, there's uh, the single phase transformer. So you've done the buck boost test, which is pre prior to this in the play playlist. Uh, and now you're going to hook up the single one of the transformers uh, as either a low voltage or a high voltage configuration. So low voltage just means that it's connected up in parallel. So this means parallel connection. And what, uh, what that means is that normally in most single phase transformers, they only have a single winding on the secondary. With this one, we've got two windings on the secondary. So we can either uh, put them in parallel to have the lower voltage or put them in series to have the higher voltage. Now, I'm gonna, as I go through, you're gonna see that some weird voltages uh, as an output here. And that's because in our shop, uh, we only have one supply of voltage. We only have 208 volts available. So we don't have 600, we don't have 480. Uh, so we're working with 28. So we're gonna go through all the configurations based off of a 28 uh, supply. So some of the, the voltages that we see out are gonna be strange. We're gonna have 69 volts on some. We're gonna have 138 volts. Um, we're gonna have 240 volts out. So we're gonna have some funky voltages and that's strictly because we only have one supply of voltage. Okay. Um, and I think in, the, in all the other videos I've shown, um, like as you're wiring these up, then we're obviously trying to be as safe as possible using the, the touch safe jacks and everything. Um, and uh, when you're taking the meter readings, you'll see that in the videos that, uh, that follow this, where I'm like showing how, how to wire up each of the shop projects, um, that my hands are never in the circuit. I'm using the touch leads, um, touch safe leads uh, and never putting my hands into the circuit. So I don't need to use high voltage gloves or anything like that. Okay, so let's start off with the single phase uh, diagram. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have uh, line one and line two. So we have two eight volts in the shop. In this case, we're gonna grab single phase two eight volts. So that's gonna be our feed for each of these guys. And what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, have line one feed H1 and line two feed H2. Okay, we're going to do that for both of these guys. So when you hook these guys up, you can keep the primary the same for both of these projects. So as you're doing the shop projects, you'll see that the wiring is quite quite quick, um, unless you make a mistake. Uh, and then there's some questions that follow on each of these guys. So uh, that means that we have 208 volts applied to our primary. In this case, we're doing the single phase. Uh, and the ratio for this transformer, meaning uh, like this number of turns versus the number of turns on the secondary is actually 1.73 to one. So this would be uh, our primary being a higher voltage and our secondary being a lower voltage. So uh, this may screw you up later on as well because the ratio from primary to secondary is actually root three to one. So don't let that screw you up. It's just simply the fact that if I have two eight volts on the primary, I'm going to have 120 volts available on the secondary, strictly based on the number of turns on the transformers that we have in the shop. Okay, so that provides us with 120 volts on each of these guys. Now, if we're doing the parallel connection, then that means that we're going to have uh, X1 and X3 jumpered together. So one of the things that I neglected to mention already is that um, H1 and X1 are going to have the same instantaneous polarity. So as soon as I juice this up, then whenever H1 goes positive, then X1 is going to go positive as well. Okay. On the other, on the same side of the second transformer, that would be X3. So you'll notice that I've crossed the lines here of the transformers. 
That's simply so that I can put these jumpers in without having too much crisscrossing. And it also in control transformers, you will find that um, they do this as well. So they'll go X4, X2, X3, X1. And then if you're needing to do a jumper, then they, the control transformers actually come with jumpers that are uh, physically the exact same distance from here to here. So they have a, um, a jumper that goes across and then you tighten it down with the, with the terminals. So that also means that X3 is going to be at the same potential as well. Okay, so what we're going to do here, if we're going to do a parallel connection, if these guys have the same instantaneous polarity, then I'm good to go to uh, parallel them up or join them up because they're going to have the same instantaneous polarity. So X1 and X3 are going to be joined together and X2 and X4 are going to be joined together. If I'm doing uh, the series connection, then I'm going to series up X2 and X3 so that current would go through, current would be available from this guy or voltage, whatever you, you you want, and then it's going to add to this voltage here. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in, uh, let's see, just use this, and I'm just going to do some arrows to denote instantaneous polarities. So I got um, x1 to x2, and I got x3 to x4 here. Okay, so these are my instantaneous polarities on there, denoted by these dots that are right here. Okay, so that just means that H1 and X1 are going to be positive at the same time, and H1 and X3 are also going to be positive at the same time. Okay, so taking on uh, the final connections down here, uh, for this one, we have a parallel connection, so we're just going to go uh, line 1, line 2, uh, and we're going to bring X1 down to line 1, and we're going to bring um, X4 down to line 2. Okay, so if I have uh, 120 volts available between X1 and X2, and X2 is jumpered to X4, that means that the voltage that's available, let me go back to blue here, uh, the voltage that's available between line 1 and line 2 is going to be 120 volts. Okay, so in this case, I got two 8 volts coming in, and I got 120 volts coming out, and that would be single phase. So my output here would be 120 volts, single phase out. Okay, so that would be the lower voltage that's available. If I have um, a series connection where I have X2 and X3 connected together, then I'm going to go uh, line 1, line 2, and I'm going to drop a neutral down here as well. And we're going to have X1 going to line 1. I'm going to have X4 going to line 2, just as we had over here. But these guys are seriesed up, so that means that these voltages are going to sum together. So that means that this voltage between these two guys is going to be 240 volts single phase. Is it going to have the 120, right, plus the 120 volts available? Okay. If I'm checking the uh, the any voltage between X1 and X2 or X3 and X4, well, that's going to be my phase voltage there within there. So if I wanted to drop that down to the neutral, then any line to neutral is then going to have 120 volts. Okay, so each of these windings have the exact same amount of turns. So when I put 28 to the primary, then I get 120 volts available on each of these secondaries. Okay, on this one for the, the parallel connection, then I have 120 volts that's available between these two terminals, whether I'm going from uh, X1 to X3, sorry, X1 to X2 or X3 to X4. And then with this one, I'm summing the 120 and the 120 to provide me with 240 volts. And if I grab this center tap right here, then I should see 120 volts uh, between any line and neutral. So if I wanted to add on here, then from this line to neutral would also be 120 volts single phase available. Okay, normally in a household, uh, then the neutral would be bonded to ground. Okay, so for any imbalance loads or anything and to have our breakers go off quicker. Uh, in the shop, you don't need to bond the neutral to ground. It's not really going to do anything uh, to any of your voltages uh, because we don't have any loads connected to these transformers. What you're also going to find, which is a little bit frustrating, is that in the shop, um, 
two things are going to happen. Sometimes it's not going to be 2.8. Sometimes it's going to be 210, 211 that's available in the shop. So sometimes the voltage that's available on our floor where the shop is located is actually larger than 2.8. It really depends on what is hooked up at that point on that floor. If the large compressor turns on, then the voltage will get closer to this nominal voltage of 2.8. If that voltage is higher at 2.10 or 2.11, that means that the ratio that it's up above 2.8 is also going to increase this voltage. So we're not going to usually read 120 volts. We'll probably read like 124, 125 volts. That's because this voltage is a little bit higher. The other reason why this secondary voltage is going to be um, higher than usual is that we don't have any loads connected to the secondary. So there's a voltage available, but there's no current that's actually flowing in the circuit. So that means that the internal resistance of the windings is not going to be able to drop the voltage. If we were to connect up some lights or anything to, uh, to have an actual load on these transformers, then we would have current flowing through the windings, a little bit of voltage would be dropped across the windings, and we'd go from that 124 volts down to the nominal 120 volts that we're looking for. So two reasons for why we're going to have some funky voltages in the shop is that A, sometimes this voltage is 207, sometimes it's 28, sometimes it's 211, depends on the day. And uh, when that changes, then it obviously changes the secondary voltage because these guys are just uh, based on the number of turns and the ratio that we have here. And the fact that we don't have a, a load that's connected up to the secondary. So when you don't have load, you don't have current flowing. And so you just have a voltage and there's no uh, drop in voltage across the transformer. So normally with uh, transformers, generators, any type of source of even a battery, um, prior to actually connecting up a load, you're going to see a higher voltage than with the nominal voltage that you're looking for. Okay, so hopefully everybody's cool with the low voltage and the high voltage for the single phase transformers. Again, I'm going to do it from start to finish. So this will be a quite a long uh, video. And I'm going to show all the different configurations from single phase all the way through three phase and then the three phase auto transformers as well. And then later on in the playlist, then I'll show the actual wiring.